first layer is missing. Yeah, that's got it, yeah. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. So I'm gonna discuss a little bit about uh, left main angioplasty in the current era in 2023. Thank you for everyone coming on the Sunday to listen to our talks, to understand a little bit of about uh, cardiology and to uh, practice in your daily life, okay? So um, left main disease, so why is it left main disease more important? Because we know that left main disease of anything more than 50% is found in five to 7% of the people who are undergoing coronary angiography. And 70% of these patients will have multivessel coronary disease. So it's not like just an isolated left main except for those 30% to have isolated left main. And in 80% of the time, we'll see distal left main in, uh, involvement. And we know the left main is important because if you have an occluded left main, it compromises around 75% of the LV myocardium. If you have a right dominant coronary system, which is the most commonest uh, dominant system, and if you have a left dominant system, it's 100% uh, uh, compromise of your myocardium. And that is the reason why the left main is considered very important uh, when it comes to management of patients with left main disease. So this is a, a Ms. Andreas Grunsig. Dr. Andreas Grunsig is a, a, you know about the father of international cardiology who did his first uh, angioplasty. This is his third angioplasty back in 1977. And uh, we are still discussing about angioplasty of left mainstream in 2023. But there are different evolution of technologies. Uh, data has been evolving on a day-to-day -day basis and things are growing forward as soon as possible. So if you want to discuss about what would you uh, do if you have a patient with left main coronary artery disease, the standard practice is CABG. But what we have now from data emerging from different trials, mixed data from different trials, but if you look at the hard endpoint, which is the mortality, this one particular slide will tell you that if you undergo CABG or PCI for left main, at the 10 years, there is no significant difference in mortality between CABG versus PCI. This is from a syntax trial, which included patients who have left main coronary disease with an intermediate or a low syntax score undergoing either CABG or PCI. So I think that's a very important message. I want to clarify that mortality-wise, there is no significant difference at 10 years between CABG versus PCI. Of course, there are other discussions about repeat revascularization and all. And then we have a meta-analysis data from uh, the latest 2021 Lancet, which comprises uh, at least six clinical trials comparing CABG versus left main PCI. And the fire mortality again is shown here very nicely that there is no significant difference in the fire mortality and also at the 10 years. So there is, in terms of mortality, either do CABG or PCI in left main, there is no significant difference in particularly with intermediate and low risk syntax score patients. So how do you decide your patient and you do angioplasty for left main? I think this is what the, both the American College of Cardiology and the European Society of Cardiology discusses about shared decision making. So the whole chance of doctor deciding about what treatment for the patient should come out. And we openly discuss with patients what are the options available, what are the pros and cons of each individual decision-making process. So some patient may say that I don't want my chest to open, I don't have a problem coming back after five years to have another angioplasty. Then you can do angioplasty for the left main. If somebody may say, well, I don't want anything to be done, there is a small chance that even in CABG patients with left main undergoing bypass surgery can come back with further restenosis, but the chances are a little less compared to PCA. That is what exactly the data says, that there is a chance of repeat revascularization slightly higher in patients undergoing PCI compared to CABG. So the decision should be made by the patient with a full informed consent. So that is where the whole guidelines is moving towards that rather than deci you deciding on the treatment for the individual patient, you give the chances and you discuss completely and make the decision. So shared decision making is the uh, main uh, goal of therapy now. So with this background, I just want to quickly show a few cases of simple left main angioplasties, which we do on a routine basis, and also some of the complex cases. Dr. Vijay has nicely shown all the cartoon of the animation of those technologies, uh, but I'll just show you a few cases of how we do that as well. So this is my first patient. is a 68-year-old female with hypertension and dyslipidemia, a typical history of breath, uh, chest pain on exertion, an echocardiogram showed normal LV function, and she underwent a treadmill test, which showed strongly positive at stage one. And this is the coronary angiography of her. So you can clearly say, see that uh, the uh, there's a significant stenosis involving the shaft of the left main. It's a very focal stenosis. There's no problem in the LAD and there's no problem in the circumflex. So this, uh, her syntax score is only 12 and she is a left main patient. So the right coronary artery was normal. So what we did is we did an OCT and then we did an angioplasty of the left main and you can see the artery has grown up just so 
So this was five years ago and she's doing extremely well. So this lady has never had any problems. She's absolutely doing well, but except that she has to continue with her antiplatelet, at least one antiplatelet for a long time because she has got a stent in the left main. So this is one of those very easy patients undergoing left main angioplasty. Now, you may come across patients with bifurcations, which is where the division of the coronary artery happens, and you may have disease involving that disease. So this is one of the examples of a 74-year-old gentleman with a significant uh, stenosis involving the ostium of the left anterior descending artery. This is the artery going there, and this is the circumflex artery. So uh, OCT is an intravascular imaging modality to look at the uh, size of the coronary arteries and the uh, morphology of the coronary artery disease to decide upon which strategy is the best strategy before you go ahead with your angioplasty. So again, uh, we do this for uh, assessment of the coronary arteries at a different levels. We measure the size of the artery to make sure that the, your size fits in there so that there's no problem with uh, like, you know, uh, opening up the artery. So this is what we did. We just did a ballooning of the two, two branches, and then we did angioplasty of one branch to the opposite side. And this is what we see. So essentially, she had a very significant stenosis involving the left main and the LAD, and this is what we end at the end of the procedure. So sometimes we come across a, a very complex left main, like this gentleman, who had angioplasty done somewhere else, and uh, uh, he presented back to us after three years. Unfortunately, the, he had a stent, which has got re-stenosis at the circumflex origin. Uh, this was done without imaging, and uh, uh, he presented to us with this uh, coronary angiography, and you can see there is a significant lesion involving that. And then these kind of uh, complex anatomy, you're engaging the guiding catheter itself is very difficult to engage because it's got an anomalous origin where your left main coronary artery is not coming at the level uh, where it should be coming. So we, we did that and we again used a special uh, coated balloons uh, on one side and a stent on the other side and this is what you get. So this is again an OCT image to measure the size of the artery and the understanding the pathology behind your re-narrowing in the coronary arteries at each segment and making a decision that which is the best modality for his gentleman to get a better outcome in the long term. I think the whole idea is to make sure the patients do better uh, outcome in the long run. So this is what we put a new stent from the left main into the LED and this is what we get. So just, uh, yeah, again, it's OCT confirming that your stent is fully opposed and there is no uh, re-narrowing within the stent. And as we discussed, we may uh, come across patients with calcified coronary arteries like this one. Uh, you can see that the patient had a CT angiogram which showed significant calcification involving all three coronary arteries. And we have discussed already about these uh, four modalities of uh, uh, modifying the calcium with rotablation, intravascular lithotripsy, laser is mainly used for moderate calcium and orbit laterectomy in large vessels. So uh, this is a gentleman who had multiple uh, blockages and the intravascular ultrasound showed significant amount of calcium in the lumen as we can see and we used rotablation as we discussed uh, and these are all around 147 uh, uh, thousand RPMs which is we can go up to two, 200,000 RPMs uh, to ablate the coronary artery and this is what we get. Intravascular lithotripsy as we discussed this is a gentleman with a significant left main coronary artery disease heavily calcium 75 year old gentlemen and um, the advantage of intravascular uh, lithotripsy is it cuts through the calcium very deeply so in these kind of patients where you have a very chunk of calcium all around in the 360 degrees it can help you to deliver the balloon and make sure that you have a good calcium cracks like what we see here it softens the material so you can uh, use your stains and the stains can fully enlarge as one should be because the, we know from data that you are, as long as your stains is fully enlarged the chances of re-narrowing re within the arteries is extremely low so that is the whole why we are using intravascular imaging modalities to confirm that. And again, uh, this is orbital atherectomy, essentially the same technique where it's slightly different that it rotates in an orbital fashion. So it uses in the large blood vessels like this one where you have significant narrowing and you can put a stand there as well. So laser, as we discussed, it's not for a heavily calcified coronary arteries, it's mainly for moderate calcium and also thrombotic lesions. And this particular gentleman has got re and a lot of calcium inside. So we use laser to do that. And occasionally we may use 
to uh, use angioplasty without any contrast, particularly if the patient has very high creatinine like this one. She's a lady with a EGFR of 23 with a creatinine of 3.7, significant left main LAD disease, and we have to use very limited amount of contrast to do angioplasty as well. And you can see that the total amount of contrast is only 8 mil with a uh, intravascular ultrasound we managed to deliver the stents. Uh, and there are certain situations where the ejection fraction is extremely low patients with poor LV function. A gentleman with CKD, 53-year-olds, ejection fraction of 28%, so we have to use road ablation, but we, whether the question was whether he will tolerate the road ablation during the procedure, we used an impella, which is essentially a, a, a mechanical circulatory device, which helps you to unload the left ventricle while you're doing your angioplasty, so you can don't have any worry about your left ventricular function during the time of angioplasty. So it takes uh, extreme care during the time. You can go ahead and do your road ablation, and uh, you can deliver the stents like what we did in this particular patient. So this is what the final outcome is. And these, most of these uh, procedures can be done radially without needing to open the chest, and uh, there is no need for any femoral access. This is our data back in 2020, around 64 patients in the period of uh, just before COVID, around one and a half months, uh, we did the left main angioplasty, and we said that the results were very similar to what we got in the uh, clinical trials as well. And this is our review article on that. So in conclusion, left main PCI is a reasonable alternative to CABG in many patients with left main stenosis. Imaging techniques such as OCT and intravascular ultrasound help to optimize the outcomes. And this should be performed by expert operators and centers with full faculty facility. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Rafai or Shaukat Ali for that wonderful presentation. Uh, any question uh, to be asked for him? We'll be having a few minutes. So when it comes to left main, I think both modalities can be useful, except in uh, where the osteum of the left main, we don't use OCT because OCT imaging involves injecting contrast into the coronary artery to clear the blood vessels, uh, so for the images to be more clear. So if you have a narrowing in the osteum of the left main, the OCT may not help you much. So therefore, we use intravascular ultrasound in osteal left main. Otherwise, you can use any modalities to, uh, to, be, uh, to analyze the left main as such. They all go into micro, uh, see, when you do these technologies, they all go into nanoparticles. So these nanoparticles does not affect your circulation in the coronary artery. So they just delivers and it just runs through the blood vessels and it gets going to the circulation. There's no issues with that as well. Sir, uh, how do you, how, excuse me here. I can't yeah, see. How do you prevent the dissection uh, after the procedure, sir, during the procedure? Uh, uh, this, no, um, so essentially, if you have a, a dissection during the procedure, if you have the wire still present there, they can, uh, you can try and uh, yeah, use another stent to uh, cover the dissections. Thank you.